Welcome to Robinson Studios. In today's video, I build my first house. Hello peeps, welcome back to The Nest. I've been having a discussion with our local club organizer on how to grab more attention to the war machine tables when we're playing in shop. And these conversations always end up pointing in one direction. 3D terrain. 3D terrain is really that thing for War Machine that is kind of lacking from tabletops as compared to other war games that are set up in shop. The other thing that could grab the attention of passersby is fully painted armies, but that's a discussion for another video. So to help solve this problem, we decided that we would divvy up and create some 3D terrain for the shop. The goal being to have at least one table filled with 3D terrain when the world goes back to normal. One of the things that I decided to build was a house. The house is a pretty iconic terrain piece for a war machine setup when it comes to obstructions. And since we're building this terrain specifically for war machine, we're going to make sure that it fits the steamroller parameters. So the footprint of this house is going to be 3 inches by 6 inches. And from here, we're going to jump right into the build. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut out everything needed for this house. I have the bases cut out of MDF to the top here, and I'm going to be using foam board for all of the walls to this house. Once everything has been cut out, we're going to rip the paper off of one side of this foam board here. This is going to help us create the texture that we're looking for for the exterior of the building. Here you can see me using this wall section to help me measure out the length for a wooden dowel. These wooden dowels are going to be used to create the majority of the designs on the exterior of our structure. We're not trying to get fancy here, we're just trying to create a nice, quick, rustic looking farmhouse. Now the hot glue gun that I'm using here is a medium heat hot glue gun and this is to keep the foam from melting on me as I'm working with it. Now it will melt it a little bit but that's kind of good because when we put our wooden dowel in there it'll give it a little bit of a recess. And you can see what I'm doing here is I'm using the dowel to frame out a window for the side of the house. These diagonally placed dowels are here for decoration and it's going to be a little bit more obvious what they're there for once we get to painting this. Literally everything I did on this was using wooden dowels all the way down to the doorknob on this door. Here you can see me framing out another window, only this time to the front of the home. Once I have all these dowels in place, I take a toothbrush and I roughly scrub that against all of the foam. This is going to help give me a more rough, plaster-like texture once we come to painting it. And now that we have all of the walls completed, it is time to assemble this thing. And this is the reason why we left the paper on the inside of this structure. This way when we're using the hot glue this time, we don't have to worry about it melting away all of our foam leaving gaps. Once all four walls are in place, it's time to put our MDF base on the bottom of this to help hold everything together and give it some more support. Unfortunately here, I didn't get this base on just quite right, so I'm trying to shift everything around. Much to my dismay, this hot glue dried a lot quicker than I expected. And I was being a little too heavy handed. After spending a little bit of time getting this back together, I noticed that in the corners of this house, there was a gap 
between the two dowels at the end of each of the walls. I decided to solve this problem by, you guessed it, adding another dowel. Here you can see that I added some dowels diagonally towards the roof of this to give a little bit of support for our roof here. And all this is is cardboard with one of the flat sides removed. This provides us with the perfect texture for tin roofing once we paint everything up. I'm adding a wooden dowel to the top of the roof here to give it a little bit more stability. In all reality, I should have put this on first prior to putting the cardboard on. One wooden dowel wasn't long enough to do this, however, so I had to put a chunk of another one on there. A little bit of overhang there gets removed off camera. After we finished building this house, it's time to paint it. And I'm going to try and take advantage of the airbrush as much as possible for this because of these large areas. Trying to paint onto foam and cardboard with a paintbrush yeah, I'm not doing it. Nope, let's get into the paint job. This was primed black with the Matte Black Army Painter Primer. I used a spray can, one because it's terrain, and two because with an aerosol can, once I got a little close to the foam, I was able to melt it a little bit to give an extra bit of texture to what I'm going for with plaster walls on this house. And then the roof was painted red with some craft paints. Here you can see I'm giving all of the walls a base coat of Iraqi sand. We are going to focus this on the center lines here so that it will help us build up our shadows in the later steps. all of that is dried we're going to come in now with an off-white and we're going to focus that even more towards the center of each of these panels giving a transition from white to the darkest of the Iraqi sand that wasn't fully opaque over the black undercoat. Doing this is really going to help the texture of these walls stand out and it's really going to help us sell the plaster wall look that we're going for. And the next step is to black out all of the windows. We're not going to get crazy with these windows, putting in any kind of light glimmers or shines, none of that. We're just going to leave them black and be done with them. This terrain is for play, which means it has to look good, but more so than that, it has to be sturdy and robust. The next and most tedious step of this project was painting all of the wooden trim. I did this with a fairly large brush and some brown craft paint because I'm not trying to use up an entire bottle of my model paints for this. Here I'm finishing up the third and final coat on all of this wooden trim trying to make sure it's dark enough to stand out and away from the walls themselves. Next up, it is time to paint the door. I went with red, mostly because the roof was red and I wanted to keep it to a limited color palette, but also if I went brown, it would just blend in with the molding and I found with a white door it would just look like part of the wall so red to me helped it really stand out as a door 
Then we take a little bit of silver and we paint in the doorknob here. Now this doorknob is just a chunk of wooden dowel that was very thinly cut and put in place to mimic a doorknob. Now the wooden posts here seemed a little plain to me, so I decided to come in with a light tan color and kind of sketch in some fake wooden grain. Uh, nothing fancy, just something to give a little bit of visual diversity to the wood here. Next up, it was time to make this cardboard look like a tin roof. And the way we do that is we take some silver paint and we dry brush that all over this red here. This is going to make it look like a scraped, weather-worn tin roof. Next step is to lay down some washes. I take out the strong tone and I apply it to all of the wooden trim here really sloppily along the edges to kind of give it a worn old cruddy look. And now the painting portion of things is done. What you see me doing here is I took a bead of Elmer's glue along the bottom of this house and I'm applying some sand to that. Once the sand had dried that was hit with some strong tone wash as well. After that we some more PVA glue and we add some static grass. Now we're not adding this to the entire rim of the base. We are spacing it out to make the grass look a little patchy. And then we tap off the excess back into our container. After we had applied the grass, I sealed this with some watered down PVA glue through a spray bottle and misted the entire thing to give it a little extra shell of protection for when hands are picking it up and putting it down while it's being used in play. So what do you guys think of my very first house? It's nothing fancy, it's not going to win any awards, but it's definitely going to serve its purpose, especially for shop terrain. It's nice to take a break from painting models every once in a while and use that time to make a little bit of terrain. Making terrain gives you a nice creative outlet because you can really kind of go anywhere you want with it. With War Machine, depending on the terrain that you're making, you have to make sure it's functional within the rule set, but you still have that creative freedom. And obstruction's an obstruction regardless of what it looks like. Tell me, what did you think of this house build? Have you made any 3D terrain for War Machine and Hordes? Let me know in the comment section down below. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, all that other social media stuff. It really does help out the channel a lot. That's all for now. I gotta fly. As always, keep on painting, peeps.